Top left. Oof, wait. Say what? Ready. Set. Go. And all right. Welcome back to another episode of Three Guys Being Awesome because Neff's not here. Uh, Neff's not here this evening. He's having a heavy flow day. Uh, so it's not going to be his night. But tonight he's missing out on Crazy Mountain Old Soul Belgian Style Ale, which has a picture of what looks like a badger and a sloth with wings. Uh, and he's going to miss out on Life Coach from Kansas Territory, which I didn't realize it is. Uh, and it's got the uh, motto, suck it up. So, I think that's the only Kansas ter- Territory can I've seen. Maybe. Yeah, I think it's yeah, the only one I've seen as well. Bottles. Yeah, they, they did the no. Were they the ones who did the Copperhead that we did? No, no, no that's restate. Oh, that's ah, there we go. Uh, also, shout out to Matt Rush who liked the page and Josh Cook who commented on the beer tonight. Yeah. So, uh, congrats, guys! You win at being awesome for the day. Welcome, Good AJ. Good job. Welcome. What's up, guys? the fuck is my hat? Well, <laughs> wait, you need a hat tonight? Is that, uh, is that what's going on? Hey, what's up, guys? Things aren't good enough that you don't need the hat. Neff's got some shit going on. What's up, AJ? You Blair, welcome. So it throws me off when the video is playing and it's got chat, and then the actual chat overlays the chat, and I'm like, whoa, yeah. what's what's going on? Chatception. <laughs> cheers. Chat, chatception. Yeah, cheers, everybody online. Uh, toss them back. You know your your jeans look like mom pants. Look, I just got like these. Jeans. No, his, his. I just his got jean these. shorts. Oh, shorts. They, yeah, they. I don't know. They're they're not really a denim. They they look denim. They get yeah, a denim, denim look. Denim. <laughs> <laughs> <That's the> Mario. So you talked about the beer earlier. I did a little bit. Uh, are you gonna show the picture? Or is that right before review? I, I always forget how these things are done because every week I'm drunk. So that's it's a curse and a gift. With so, great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> great Crazy Mountain uh, Brewing Company. It looks like they have uh, Vail Valley, Colorado, and Denver, Colorado. He, uh, he specified Denver. Wherever. <clears throat> over here. He's yeah. glider midsection here with us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, am I... Am I... My cut? Oh you no! Know, last week I wore the green. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. Uh, the last beer we had from these guys, you hated, and did you hate as well? I didn't hate it. We didn't have it on stream. We didn't have it on stream, but the last beer we had from them. What's it, up, David? It was okay. All out to you. Okay, at best. <clears throat> God, I think I've had four or five. David, get a beers, life. Which may be all. I'll watch a different really? cast. Yeah. We don't want wow. you here. The like. Badger or whatever, and then the owl. Then there's the mountain lion cat thing that I drank at your bosses. And it wasn't, it was kind of ass, but I drank like all six in an hour, hour and a half. Dude, you won poker. You you won the poker game. (laughs) I've never seen you more drunk than that night. Like, I, I just remember towards the end of the night, you and Julie were yelling at each other. Even though you were winning, you're like, shut up, bitch! I'll choke you! I'll choke you! Is this that you're. Give, uh, give me my money, I win! Is this at Britt's house? Yeah. In oh, front really? Of a bunch of people I didn't even know. <laughs> uh, it was great. It was, uh, it was pretty funny. Tate's angry off the bar. Ooh. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Nathan. I don't appreciate you enough. You're, you got a pretty face. You're angry off the bar. Oh, wait! Speaking of uh, bars, I saw you had another brunch video. Brunch oh video my god, too? I feel like such a millennial. Every fucking Sunday I'm at brunch. I yeah. don't know how it happens, <laughs> but it, it does. And I, uh, yeah, we were, Teresa and I. Uh, brunch we'll, video? Uh, maybe, maybe, it was, post. maybe it was post. Well, like I said, uh, you didn't comment on it, but I uh, only, Chris commented on it, but I sent you guys this, the, the snap of my Strava 
uh, of our bike ride, and we finished oh, at, yeah, yeah, okay, uh, at brunch. Uh, and, but we also went around and uh, saw Discovering Slime Naturally. That was kind of fun. Uh, right around 11, we were rolling around and you know, talking to vendors. And then we went to brunch uh, and got biscuits and gravy, beers, and uh, Teresa got that avocado pizza thing. It was all good. That's pretty cool. If you guys haven't tried it, it, it it's actually... I feel a bunch of millennials. <laughs> uh, on a uh. scale of one to net puking, he was an 11. He was after Neff puked, but Neff's, Neff was lightweight in, in the uh, the last situation. Uh, Chris was Chris was done. He was done, done. The worst part about it was Chris finished six and then still drank six more. Yeah, like he was he was done. I've never seen Chris uh, at two a.m. Uh, on a bender. Done. But uh, I don't I, puke though, unless no, I, I go like, like off drinking liquor. I don't think I've puked since I was like my twenty first. It's been nine. Years I think I've puked so. at your thirtieth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, I absolutely did because my wife drove home and I had my head out the window and I was like, I'm going to, you're too, too <laughs> fat. Uh, uh, uh. So, what, uh, uh that brings Cinco out to Mile good. Saturday? Uh, uh, Cinco as well. I made hand crafted margaritas all day cucumber jalapeno and lime and. I was at a crawfish boil in Ooh. Manhattan. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right, after graduation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Not very Cinco de Mayo y, but uh, kind of Cajun. Oh, so you were doing the Manhattan graduation, not. No, I started graduation here in Salina, but then a buddy of mine has the crawfish bowl every year in Manhattan, and um, I go. Uh, but, is he, is he alumni? With the. State. His, his whole family is. He, oh. I don't know if he was, but I know his family. Uh, 21st birthday party was, uh, or, yeah, was brought up. You guys have good 21st birthday memories or stories? Nope. Oh, God. Nope. Mine was terrible. Uh, I had moved here. I had no friends. My family had just moved. Um, my... There's two on the table. What the fuck? What do you need? I don't need shit. Jason, you got one right there. Oh, man. My very recent, at that point, stepfather <laughs> uh, took me out to, uh, to drinks on behalf of my mother. And my mother suggested that I have a whiskey sour. And I, I've since had a whiskey sour, and they're delicious. This was at Sunset Billiards, sure. and it was absolute garbage. Up. And I was like, oh, man, this, this has ruined my whole night. I had the one drink the whole evening. Played pool twice, lost, went home. I was like, yeah. Damn. Yeah, what, a, what an awesome 21st. What an awesome 21st. You want I, to go next? I had a fucking killer 21st. Yeah? I worked for Geek Squad at the time. All right. <laughs> uh, and, like, I don't know what it was about our particular Geek Squad, but it was the Geek Squad I in think that's like an oxymoron. Hey, what? You working for Geek Squad. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, I was a good fucking geek. Uh, yeah. But uh, oh, Manhattan's Geek Squad was really cool. Uh, and my 21st birthday was in Aggieville in Manhattan uh, with all the Geek Squad guys. And we started at O'Malley's with Irish Car Bombs. And Victor Kovalev was one of our uh, our fellow geeks. And that guy could drink like a Russian, obviously. Kind of Russian. Mm -hmm. uh, but I remember we were at Shot Stop. And this was midnight-ish. We'd already been everywhere. And I'd already had at least 15 shots on top of... Oh, God. Oh, and we started at the movie theater with Four Locos. We watched Expendables 2... In the you theaters, and your fucking four locos. Four locos in the theaters uh, before midnight because we went out on my the night of or the midnight before my birthday. So I turned twenty one at midnight, whatever. But they lined up twenty one shots in the bar at Shot Stop, uh, and they're all clear. And they had just cycled in water and vodka, but you didn't know what was what. And so I had, I was already hammered, and so I was doing these shots. Oh, and it was the worst vodka on the, on the you know. Like it was in the store. McCormick's vodka. Oh, it was bad. Just bottom and so I get I get one, two water, bam, vodka. Oh, it was bad. Twenty one all the way down. And by that point, I was so full that that taking twenty one shots in a row put me in. Yeah. And I, I was bet. sprinting to the bathroom, uh, and then just just grabbing the toilet. It, such violent vomiting. It was. Mine horrible. was similar. <laughs> uh, Three Eleven Snoop Dogg concert <clears throat> down in Atlanta. We got a hotel right there off of uh, 
whatever fucking highway that is, 85 or whatever, down by the venue. Afterwards, we decided to go to, or was it before? Normal I Thursday think, in Manhattan. That's, that's it, we'll come. <laughs> I think afterwards we went to Underground Atlanta. Probably, we were definitely the minority, but I remember hitting on the bartender for a while, whatever. It was me and my buddy Troy. The last thing I remember is taking shot after shot after shot. He tried to do the 21 shot thing on me. And it was 21 shots. And I think I made it. (laughs) In like an hour and a half. Well, he said we ended up getting an Uber back to the hotel. And he supposedly brought some chick back to the hotel. This is me passed out on a bench in underground Atlanta. And people were like walking by, going, laughing at me and all kinds of shit. He said he carried me. Yep, Schmidt. Back to, uh, that's who I moved to Atlanta with. Uh, he, he carried me <laughs> back to the fucking hotel. And then I guess I puked all over myself in my sleep. All kinds of shit, but that, I think that's the last time I puked. Did you have a hangover the next morning? Oh, fuck yeah. That was the miraculous thing about mine, <clears throat> is after I puked at Shot Stop, I was fine. And we went back out, and we were out for another three hours. Uh, and <sighs> I, I think I went back home, and when I got home that night, I puked more that night. But then I woke up at like noon the next day. Felt great. Uh, I had a bot. So, you know, people took care of me though. They gave me mm-hmm. Tylenol. They gave me all the shit. I'm lucky that Troy was there, and it wasn't just Troy like me. Troy fucking Schmidt, <laughs> man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> Where's Schmidt? Can we get him on the show? Uh, I could try sometime. Where's he at? Uh, he's still in Atlanta. Welcome, Sydney. He's got a daughter and a son. Yeah, him and his crazy ass wife split up. I don't know what he's been up to lately. A man needs a crazy wife. I don't think we made it there. The last thing I remember was the Irish pub. Uh, a I'm... hot ass black chick working the bar. You talking about Aggieville? No. no. Well, if he's talking yeah. about Tubby's, I think he's. Talking about oh, Aggieville. I've been there in Manhattan. I thought you were talking about Atlanta. No, Tubby's in Manhattan's pretty uh, pretty noteworthy. Is that the one with the beer pong table right when you walk in? It changes. Hey, Brad! They used to have Tubby's Tuesdays, which was like uh, 50 cent tacos. Uh, well, we called it Tubby's Tuesdays, but uh, I always got the wings there. And there was uh, probably four years we went where... What's up, Sydney? Brad? Me and Teresa and then our crew went there every fucking Tuesday and just got plowed. Uh, you knew it was Bruise Days then. Yeah, Tuesday is the night for drinks. <laughs> yeah. uh, Speaking of Brad, this weekend was pretty awesome. We hung out with him quite a bit. Um, I hit him up on our way down or before, seeing if he wanted to go to Worlds of Fun and shit. We ended up not going because it was opening weekend. Oh, <clears throat> that sounds fucking miserable. No Neff. No. He went out and drank Neff, a couple. Neff is incapacitated. No Neff. He went out and drank a couple with us. We went and had barbecue. He took us <clears throat> to Westport, which we were the minority there as well. And it was still a blast. Westport's fucking cool, dude. Man, it was awesome. They got the streets sectioned off and everybody's just fucking going crazy. So no no offense, but one of my one of my best friends on the, on the planet still lives in Westport. Yeah? Hell yeah. No, I'm just saying no offense because, I mean... Hmm. I like you guys. You're not my best friend either. Oh, uh, okay, cool. cool. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> oh, that was the offensive thing. I thought it was because he was saying they were the minority, and you were like, no, no offense. No. no, no, it's because we're not friends. My other buddy does. No, we Dusty. couldn't get into the karaoke bar, and Julie almost cried because she loves karaoke, and we were all fucked up because Brad had <laughs> gym shorts on, and we didn't fit the dress code. Oh, you fucking piece of shit, Brad. <laughs> I'm taking oh, my shirt off because God damn. I didn't fit the dress code either. I had a cut-off <laughs> cut off Jacuby shirt under a white tee. Oh, white God tees damn. aren't allowed in because it's, like, gang-affiliated. You can't wear a cut-off shirt because it's too much skin for a guy or some bullshit. So they said, take your shirt off. And put your cut off on top of your white tee. So I was gonna look like a fucking idiot in that Jesus. place. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Take my shirt off in line. Go to do that, and they're like, oh, you can't get in, Brad. You got fucking gym shorts on or whatever. I'm like, god damn it. So I put my <gasps> shit back Where on. Where the fuck is this at? Westport. At some bar you're trying to get into? Yep. There's a club. They had a dress club. Karaoke club. club. Jesus. Fuck there those is. guys. There's so much like I don't know, probably gang violence or bullshit that they've dealt with in the past, and yeah. 
Well, I don't know why gym shorts wouldn't be allowed, though. I couldn't figure it out. And my drunk ass didn't ask, either. <laughs> was Brad hammered? Or was he stoned? No, no, no. Brad, Brad's always stoned. You were sober. hammered, and Brad was sober. I've watched Dr- Dr- Brad were hammered. Par for the course, Brad. Way to be the fucking spoiler he, of the party. I don't think he was stone cold sober, but I, he was helping helping us out. He did Nami Hodai with me in Japan, which was all we could drink for like three hours, and we fucking drank and drank Put and drank. Way. And then went to karaoke, which was Nami Hodai, for four hours and drank and drank and drank. <laughs> that motherfucker was sober as I've ever seen a person. He, I was like, no fucking way. Uh, he had a Vegas bomb and a few drinks and shit when we were at the this little bar with a ton of women uh, before we went to Westport. But is beer review timer up? It is. Yeah. So hold on. Beer review. Beer uh, review. Yeah, David. Uh, I have. It takes. Oh. Several drinks to get me on the karaoke stage, but when I'm there, I fucking own it. We sing uh, Disney songs the whole night and Aqua's Barbie Girl. I did Jim Croce. Uh, <laughs> Jim Croce, and I fucking owned it. Uh, Brad and I sang A Whole New World from Aladdin. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh my god. It was amazing. You didn't get video? <laughs> no. You sang a whole new world. Yeah, we did. Oh, we my did. goodness. <laughs> we sang a whole new world. Uh, we sang I'll Make a Man Out of You from Mulan. Oh, God. Uh, God. What this else is in Japan? Sing? Yeah. Oh, we sang an Offspring song. I think we sang uh, Air Force Ones by Nelly. Uh, how was? How were you received? <laughs> did you get applause? Uh, there was only like seven of us in the room by that point. So, no, we were all really drunk. Okay. We were really, really drunk. Oh, that's... We had a blast, though. Uh, during the Aqua's Barbie Girl, there was another guy and a girl, and they swapped roles, where the guy was doing the, the Barbie Girl part, and the girl was doing the, uh, the Ken part, where he's like, come on Barbie, let's go party, and I remember her trying to do that, and then him going, oh, oh, oh yeah, and just in the highest pitch voice he could, and this is a guy with like a, a full goatee and everything, and do that, and it was, it was fucking incredible. And then the reason why we did that was because the train shut down at midnight. So it was either we hire a cab, which was going to be 50 bucks a person back to where we Ooh, were. Fuck or that. we wait till the morning and we can take the train for $4. I've never heard and of a cab that charges per person. It was, it was incredibly expensive. I've heard of expensive. them making it more expensive it, per, but really not 50 expensive. bucks a person. Yeah, it was, it was fucking nuts. The one time that we ended up taking the cab, uh, there was four What's of us up, in the vehicle. Josh? And it was two hundred and twelve dollars. That was after she convinced him to give us a student discount, and that was to go no shit twelve miles. I would have ran twelve I fucking miles. Paying. Yeah, it, it was, was my it ass cracked. Fucking nuts. Out. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, leave it to fucking Brad to give us a wall of text. <laughs> Can't you convince that I'd down to like one fucking phrase? Come back to water and soda. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Spelled correctly? And gals. Hey, Brad, I talked to. Be... No, it's A U. <laughs> Dude, <Sing> Pocahontas. <laughs> wait, wait, what's the That'd Pocahontas? Awesome. What's the what's the Pocahontas? The the wind of what? Uh, oh fuck! I, I know what you're talking about. One phrase. Paint fuck with all the, the colors, colors of the of wind. The there it yeah. is. Yeah. Some like uh, Phil Collins or something. Oh, I have no idea. It probably Maybe. is. Everything was Phil Collins back then. Yep. Oh, Tarzan. Phil Collins. Mm-hmm. That was a big one. True. That was true. So, right. we, hey, let's get these reviews. Beer. Chris, beer, this beer. is your pick, right? Beer, beer, beer. Maybe. Yeah, um, I'm kind of surprised that it's now a little more bitter being 32 IBU. Ooh, okay. Which isn't very yep. high. What's but... SRM? SRM. Yeah, right there, seven under it, it says SRM. I don't even know what that rating is. I don't either. We went over this before. We were just drunk. Was it SRM? I remember we did uh, the (laughs) original. We did OG, and we did something else, but I don't remember SRM. The SRM number was originally and still is defined by beer color intensity on a sample free of turbidity and having the spectral characteristics of an average beer. Standard reference. The absorbance of the beer measured in a half-inch cell. What Jesus the fuck Christ. does that mean? Half inch cell with monochromatic light at 430 nanometers. Thanks for the shitty definition, Google. Uh, we're just gonna roll with like how light passes through the beer. So it being low, it passes through decent. Maybe. Is that on a <laughs> one to ten scale? 
I don't I don't know what this means. Ten high, ten low? Ooh. I'm gonna go. Oh shit! This thing's got a possum tail too. No, it's got. And it's got human arms. It's got man arms. It has like a monkey. Tail Badger or head. Or I think of the whole possum, back end as a possum. It's wrapped around the tree. The whole back end is a possum. This, yeah. Did Did you guys ever watch the old Sinbad video? They trod or the Burninator, where he's like, "How you draw a dragon?" And he draws this fucking like S dragon, and it's got this big old manly <laughs> sailor arm with an anchor tattoo, and. It, you gotta give it something manly as a name. <laughs> Trodge door. And no, no, he had to just be Trodge door. He's Trodge door the burninator. Raw, he spits fire. <laughs> and it's, like this, fire. it's this lame fucking dragon with this big fucking sailor arm. And, uh, that's that's what this reminds me of because it's the same arm. It's got, it looks like it's got like a little cross tattoo with like a rosary beads up on the arm. Yeah, it actually does. Yep. yep. That's exactly what it is. Rosary tattoo. Yep. Huh. So hmm. weird. <clears throat> I've been kind of intrigued by this brewery for some reason. I think it's because they're like mutant fucking artwork. Yep. <clears throat> huh? Uh, and I've tried four or five other beers. This one's definitely one of the better ones, in my opinion. Not saying that because I picked it. It's seven and a half by volume. That's good. It's not bitter. I like that. It's a little fruity, but it's got a ton of shit going on, like you guys said earlier. Uh... I'm going to go with like a 6.5. It's not like to complain about, but it's not fantastic either. <clears throat> and this being one of their better beers, they're not a great brewery in my, <laughs> in my opinion. Up like, your game, bro. Yeah. But if you're watching, this it's, is a place where you could go and <clears throat> revolutionize their shit. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty unique. I got to um, give them that. And their artwork's definitely fucking unique, but... Uh, I don't know. So, uh, did we did we, did we say that it was made with juniper berries? <laughs> juniper berries, because you were like, "Oh, it's gin, gin, hi, gin." The what so, what uh sold me to like try it was we haven't had this brewery on the show before, and Belgian style ales I tend to like or lean towards. Or, I gave or a don't ten. Mind, so did I give a ten? You gave a ten. Mm. What, was so. what was it? So, what was it? The plum sour. That was as close to a 10 as I've gotten. That and the uh, peanut butter porter from Hydra. And, yep. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go next. Just I'm going 6.5. I take what I want. <clears throat> it's not bad. It's not great. Decent beer. So this is made with juniper berries. Juniper berries. Whatever uh, the fuck I, that is. I'm not... I believe that's what they put in gin, right? It is. It absolutely Does is. Does this have any kind of resemblance to gin? I'm not a big it gin drinker. Uh, it ain't near as dry. <laughs> Gin's dry as fuck. You yeah, take it, it's got some of the same fruity notes that it has, but I mean it's faint. It's really, really faint. So, in this one, the juniper is more prominent, and <clears throat> gin it really isn't. So I can say with one hundred percent confidence that anybody that does not has not ever like stepped out of their uh, beer box and tried craft beers, if they tried this, they would absolutely hate it. Oh, fuck yeah. They would think this is the grossest thing on the planet. Yeah. But, uh, this is really unique in, like, in a couple different ways. I, I mean, the the Belgian yeast and the flavor that that lands and the juniper berries kind of, like, they, they, they're going in the same direction. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're very, okay. they're very similar, uh, and they kind of, like, complement each other, but it's strong. Like they come from a fork in the road and join. Yeah, they, yeah. it's. I mean, it's really strong. And so <laughs> I can see this being either yes or no. I taste it, I hate it. Or I taste it, oh, I really like it. Uh, but not for the faint of heart. Mm. Um, that being said... <laughs> swig. Swiggity swig. I couldn't drink a lot of these. Mm -hmm. No. I mean, this is my second one, and I think this is it. Mm -hmm. uh, two in an evening. I wish it was more drinkable, but it's not. I'm going to have to say just a five. Uh, if it was more marketable to a broader audience, and if I liked it more, I could say it's better, but I don't know. It's a little out there. Yeah, I agree. Tate likes it 3.5. <laughs> Tate hates it 3. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I don't hate it. I don't hate this beer. That's Me why either. I gave it a five. Uh, oh, 
Ooh. It's just, it's a tough pill to swallow. Now that you mentioned that, <laughs> damn, we, we went over the scale a few weeks ago. Oh, so what do we say about a five? A five? We, should, we should throw that on the website, too. Probably. Five At least to remind ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> more than likely just to remind us. Uh, five was kind of like a, uh, you'd drink it, you'd never buy it. But then... A seven is, this is a good beer, I would buy this. Seven is a, I, I would buy this beer, it may not be my favorite, and I may not choose it over something, but it's a beer I'd possibly buy again. Uh, or I'm happy with my purchase in this beer. Yeah, a seven the, is a good like rating. A, like a six, across the board, a two, seven like is I a just good gave rating. It. Yeah. I don't mind that we got it. It it's drinkable to me, but it's not fantastic. So it, it's out there. Yeah. I would be absolutely happy to never drink this beer again. Yeah. Uh, it's not <laughs> it's not crazy bad. I mean, we've had some bad beers. It's not like something I would be like, oh no. But I can almost guarantee you, if you said, hey, I've got only this beer in my my cooler. Do you want one? I'd be like, nah, I'm I'm driving today. But like, yeah, I'm not I'm not fucking drinking. Uh with that in mind, and based on the scale that we gave it a while back, while it it tastes decent, I would never ever choose this beer, and I would absolutely never buy it. I'm gonna have to go probably a four. I'm gonna go a solid four on this. It's not a terrible beer. It's just it's hard to like, and even harder to love. It's it, it almost has that smoky flavor of a porter too. Savage, well, maybe savage. Like that, like the cutthroat. Maybe like the cutthroat. Yep. How it's kind of just like, what is that? <laughs> that like a grill. <laughs> a grill with berries. In it. All right. Buried grill. Let's get rid of this grills. next one. So four, mm -hmm. six, five, six, five, five, mm -hmm. six, five. Because hey. it was his choice. Yep, no. it's the only reason. It's not. The only reason. I was torn between a 6 and a 6 5. I don't like coach. Gotta, gotta suck it up, coach. Put me in, coach. Put me bye, in. Bye. I'm ready to play. Oh, did you restart the timer? Today. Um, 20. Oh, shit. Oh. Whatever you want, bro. Uh, oh. I'll leave this one out 15, then so that I can start 15, drinking 17. the other one. Uh, Yo, if you're out there and you got a drink in your hand, whether or not it's alcoholic or not, unless your name is Brad, uh, go ahead and let us know what it is, because yep. Brad, sorry, we don't care. Yeah. Uh, Tell us if you're drinking pop, coffee, soda pop, water. Mm -hmm. Let me know what kind of drinks you had on Cinco de Mayo. Ooh, uh, so this past weekend, <gasps> it was Cinco de Mayo. Yes. It was Kentucky Derby. Yes. It was Poker Weekend for me. I lost. Oh, which sucks. Yeah. What place did you come in? Did you get out already? Absolute last. Holy. I, went, I won the tournament last year, and then I fucking absolute last this year. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, the lady who won it, Linda, the cards were coming her way. She she was playing them like they weren't any big deal. But every hand, she kept winning. Just She kept getting the cards. She like, had it, huh? This is bullshit. I remember playing with you motherfuckers, and I got four aces. And all of you fucking folded, and I didn't get to see it to, through to the final round, and I was so upset. And I bid it low, too, but you guys were like, he's bidding. Nope. Yeah, Ow. the, the Ow. four of a kind's like Ow. a blessing and a fucking curse. Oh, yeah, you gotta play it slow. Oh, shit like that. You gotta, you gotta sit on it and just, like, test the waters a little bit. <laughs> so, while we're waiting on the next review, I don't do. Ooh. Ooh. I know you don't care, Tate. The only emotion you ever got from your parents. So the one you know just best. apathy. Apathy. Just not caring at all. Great apathy. <laughs> oh, some good hate on tape. This is the like show my weekend baby. photo. Oh. And, uh, my weekend cocktail, though, in, mm. in memory of the Kentucky Derby, was the mint julep. Mint julep. Uh, and mm. I actually, we went to, the, to the, the grocery store, and they didn't have any fucking mint. So then oh, we went to Stutzman and we bought a couple mint plants and we murdered them uh, <laughs> to make mint juleps. Uh, and man, mint julep. With Is some, it just crushed mint and whiskey? It's uh, crushed mint, simple syrup, so simple crushed syrup. ice, and then you pour the whiskey over the crushed ice and then you uh, you you know you garnish it and you mix it up a little bit, but the ice will melt and it'll mellow the drink. So it's basically a mojito, but with whiskey instead. Yeah. yeah okay. I mean, uh, well, 
Doesn't the mojito have like some sparkling water? Uh, or... oh, club soda. Club, yeah, yeah, it doesn't have any of that. It lets the ice do that for it. So it's strong. Uh, but man, they're so good. Sounds delicious. I kind of, I kind of want one. I, I could totally go for a mint julep. I, I would, I would do a mint julep. I don't know who won the Kentucky Derby though. Do you? Nope. I don't care. I, I was doing Cinco de Mayo. Mm-hmm. I, I was making I was a margarita touring Boulevard, and it was awesome. You commented on my my shaking up the margaritas video, so did I? Yeah, Brad. Oh, asked, I said yeah. Make that that kitchen bitch work yeah. or something. <laughs> Brad asked when we were going to go to West Park and do a Bruce Bros karaoke fest. Uh, you know what? Saturday, I don't think I've got shit going on. <laughs> Sunday's Mother's <laughs> Day. I'm gonna celebrate my wife, I guess. <laughs> He's not watching. Fuck that. Uh, I don't want to celebrate that. <clears throat> so Boulevard was fucking awesome. You know what they did? We were getting ready to leave. And Luke and Cooper were going their separate ways from us and Brad. And we had two tables, like two round tables pushed together. So we finished our beers, went to leave, and put them back where they belong, scooted our chairs in. And this guy like comes and like taps on my shoulder and like startled me. <clears throat> Bitch, I he swear gave you. me a handful of fucking free beers because we put all our shit back and pushed our tables. Like, really? It was the most legit thing I've seen in a while. Wow. And it made me respect the establishment that much more. I want to go. I've never been. Got a Tank 7 shirt? I don't want one of those. I've yeah. never gone. I'd like to go. It was a lot of fun. Hell off. It's a good time. Except for Brad. <sighs> <laughs> His fucking gym shorts. Yeah. God damn. He's got him on right there. Getting people kicked out of shit and stuff. Look at you and your white tee, you gang member. Yep. Fuck, what do you think you are? Member. And after I took that picture, I kicked everyone his ass a foot. Who's <laughs> ball? They couldn't God, who it. wears just a plain white tee? Fuck. The band. I do. The band, the plain white tees. I think they do that. It probably Fitty. Fitty? Fitty does it. Fitty? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was my weekend in a nutshell. Yeah, you were just banging Wait, around in Kansas City. You guys were there Sunday, right? Did you go to Gay Brunch with Brad? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, Gay Brunch. Did you actually awesome. go to the, the Gay Brunch place? <laughs> no, we went to a place called Gus's World Famous Chicken. And it was, yeah, oh, that sounds pretty good. It was all right. That sounds pretty good. They, the chicken was dry as fuck. Oh, that they had good terrible. flavor, but <clears throat> I wasn't impressed. Blue skies, like biscuits, and gravy? $36 for fucking... Three chicken tenders, a leg, and two sides. Damn. How much? My wife's meal. Yeah. How much? Eighteen dollar plate for lunch. Damn. Holy shit. Yeah. Ooh, to, Did you get a beer with it? <laughs> no, a sweet tea. Fuck. Oh. Right. Nick and Nick and Jake's was twenty bucks a person. Is all you could eat. Fucking prime rib and omelet station, uh, waffle station, full buffet with hot wings. Man, that was. Okay. That was a good time. So I got the biscuits and gravy oh, at Blue Sky. We were going to do a deprivation $7. tank. Good. We were going to do a deprivation tank while we were there. They didn't have an opening until 3 o'clock, and we got done with dinner at like 1, 1 30. I'm like, by the time we wait and do that, I could be home. Almost. No, you should have stayed for a deprivation tank. We're going to do that next oh, Next shit. time we're in KC or Wichita or... Those things are you better awesome. Yeah. yeah. They, they. I mean, it, it's just like you're floating in the... Since, oh, all, I've, I've read since all there's about no, it. like, it's pure dark. It's Graham like, Hancock ooh. says it's like you're in space. Ooh. You don't know that this is up still. Yeah. You think this is up. It, it's fucking Even that's though you're weird. laying down. That's weird. It's fucking good. And if you are like, if you have, like, a creative um, thinking, thinking habit or you're a creator or you want to focus on something before you go in, like, it just opens the doors because your brain's not working against gravity and against work and all the bullshit you they say you reach like a zen that you'll never reach well so, um, sorry go ahead i was just gonna say uh that video i sent you gre 666 uh with duncan Trussell and joe rogan they were talking all about him uh that duncan they're both cool. they're both cool people man that way, and like he was wearing this bishop outfit the whole time and he was <laughs> talking about all this crazy shit i'm like god i love these guys yeah, yeah. Joe had Brian Redband on again today. Today? I didn't listen. I didn't listen. I, I, I was watching other ones. He's on there so much. Mm-hmm. And he used to be Jamie's spot. Like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Way back. So something to note with the uh, deprivation tanks is they used to be sound dampening, too. 
so that you, if you made noise in the water, mm-hmm. you couldn't hear it. But it actually made people get out of there super fucking quick because it Freaked slowly drives you insane. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's real quick to do it, like, under 10 <clears> minutes. <throat> no, and so they had to make it to where, like, you can actually hear your body movements. And you, you can, can hear yourself like splash. That. Yeah. But you can't hear the outside world. Exactly. And that's how it should be. Yeah. Yeah. So that it's just kind of you there and you, you know. And if you do you start freaking out, you can go, yep. 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 To Josh, make sure it was, you're uh, still... It was 666. <laughs> yeah. Duncan Trussell and you Joe Rogan. Yeah. Uh, well, it was they're, they're really cool. Uh, in Wichita. It was something my sister suggested it because she's a psychology major. And she's like, hey, we, we should really do something like this. And I was like, ah. And then I asked, uh, actually, Joel. Honestly. I asked Joel where they were. And he's like, hey, here's a couple places I know of that actually do. Joel who? The, Matthews. Really? Uh, that they do something like that in Wichita. And he, I was like, okay, cool. I'll check it out. Yeah. It's, it's I'm going to build bad. one in my backyard. I thought them. about buying them. <laughs> they're, they're expensive. Two grand. Okay. For an uh, okay one. Okay. Like not a Joe Rogan one, but you know, his is like fifteen. Grand. Bitches be broke, <laughs> <laughs> dude. You can build one. Just build a pool. But I mean, see, yours is gonna be a mud pond full of salt. You're, Did you ever watch Stranger Things? You see them with all the fucking uh, salt. That's what they're building. <laughs> what the fuck did he just say? Uh, what's fun? You should really start saving your bottle caps for me. Uh, we have buckets of bottle caps, tons and bags. Unless you got rid of them. What are you going to give us for these bottle caps, Wes? Yeah, they're currency. Ask Fallout. I don't remember where I put them. I was going to say, because they were all pumpkin shandy. Jesus. (laughs) This second or third, whatever the fuck it is, uh, Old Soul is brutal. Uh, No, I haven't even started the life coach yet. Have you? Are you on the life coach? Yeah. I'm I'm just now about to pour it. Look at how fucking beer that is. He's got a two third or right there of the old soul. He hates it. Woo! It, it's hard to put down. Yeah, it's really that, that one, down. I, that last end just hurt. <laughs> no brunch was it's a sick. Sick. So awesome. It, it, next time we go visit Brad, definitely doing brunch again. I was really worried. I was like, ah, oh, that's a really expensive brunch. But I had such a good time just sitting there and just fucking chilling. Next time, Bloody Mary. I, I'm going to make sure I have Monday off, and I'm going to do a Bloody Mary lunch. So, uh, I enjoyed Brad's company. Oh, yeah. he. I mean, Brad, no offense to you. You're watching. Since I first met, met Brad till now, he's really mellowed out. He, he has grown to be an adult. He's no longer a child. Ooh. So, so uh, on the lines of Bloody Mary, yet again, mm. another shout out to Blue Sky Brewery. Sunday brunch, they have a build your own Bloody Mary bar. But it is one Bloody Mary, yes. It's one Bloody Mary, but, but it's like standard. as much shit as you can pile on it or what? They have a bar with everything you could possibly ever want to put on a fucking Bloody Mary. And they What what are the rules? What are what are the rules to this Bloody Mary? Uh, like, does it have to fit on skewers? How many skewers am I limited to? Like like that kind I, of thing. I'm pretty sure there are no rules. Uh, you can put a... Don't, don't do that to me. <laughs> but the, So the, the highlight of the Bloody Mary, though, is the in-house made beef jerky sticks that they have. Mm. It was some of the best beef jerky I've had in a long time. Thanks for the share, sweet. And I, I mean, big, generous cut pieces. And it's a $7 build-your-own Bloody Mary, which is consistent with the price that you pay anywhere for a nice Bloody Mary. But you get to put what you want in. And they had all kinds of shit. Did you say they had, like, sliders and shrimp? No. Maybe it's Chuck's I'm thinking of. Yes, so, it's got to be Chuck. Somebody there said was definitely they had no like, sliders. They had sliders and like giant jumbo shrimp. Yeah. No. Mm. There was jerky. There was uh, blue cheese stuffed olives. There was another Ooh. kind of stuffed olives. They had those little mini onions, whatever those are called. They had okra, pickled okra. They had bottomless uh, They had That's Chuck's. Bickle, or bickle spears. Pickle spears. Uh <laughs> And they gave you, I mean, they bring you a glass with ice with uh, a separate shot of vodka. So you can put as much vodka in as you want. That's normally like a double shot. Uh, and then they have their mixer that they, they put with it as well. And they have like 15 different kinds of hot sauces that you can put in. Or Ooh. It's pretty legit. Uh, and the, the nice thing about it is my biscuits and gravy were 7 bucks. Uh, we left, Teresa and I, totally full. Each of us had at least one beer. We didn't have the... I had the, the Build Your Own Bloody Mary last week, but we left and our ticket was 24 bucks. Wow. Well, not bad at all. Yeah. That and 
for Mother's Day, I could go down there with my wife, and we can get tanked on bottomless mimosas, and then walk home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have the bottomless mimosas, yep. Maybe that's what we'll do. Sarah, so, when you watch. Welcome. I hit up uh, Daniel Martinez yesterday to see if he's going to be on the show next week. I haven't heard shit from him. Wait, so are you inviting welcome? Is that what this was about? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, welcome. Uh, Regardless of how much you want to be here, I won't allow it. Tate says no. I'm I'm off next week. I'll uh I'll allow it. Isn't that what the guy with uh celebrity deathmatch used to say? I'll allow I'll it. Allow it. Yeah. What was his name? Fuck. What was his I name? I loved Brad? that show too. What was his name? It was good. That was so funny. Oh. And I tried to get my mom on tonight. And she's like, no, nope, I don't oh, drink that bullshit. That, and I'm like, you fucking awesome. pussy. Watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't just tell her, oh, you can just drink Coors all night, is that? <laughs> no. no. She's going to work at like 3 in the morning, though, doesn't she? Yeah. She goes to work super early. Sometimes 2.45. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. I, can't even, I can't even do that. My mom is a grind. She taught me how to grind. Is that what she's doing? She's not doing the millennial thing where you live with your parents until you can buy a house. She's living with her kids until she can buy a house. Is that? <laughs> she she could move out, but she benefits us. We benefit her, basically. Yeah, that's always nice. It's too. a mutual agreement. Yeah, it just feels comfortable. I mean, sometimes when you're tired of your wife, you have somebody else to talk to. Yeah. Oh, man, it's not your pet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Talking to the dog. He's just tilting his head and shit. Uh, all See, out. Judge Bill's, Bill's Lane. Lane. Is that is that what it was? Yep. Yeah. Oh man, that was good. They're like ripping their fucking arms off. Sure, and he's like, "All out." Beating people with his chair until their face is putty. And oh no, it's cool. Mm-hmm. All out. Really? All out. Oh man, it's funny though. <clears throat> uh, when I first got got into like. Uh, dirty shit like South Park. I think I was in like fifth grade and my brother would watch it with me. Like we'd watch it. He was second grade at the time. We were ten and I don't know, twelve, eleven. No no no. Whatever the fuck how old we second are. grade's like seven. Seven and <laughs> ten probably. Okay. Because I'm young for my age. And I remember <laughs> when I lived in Georgia <laughs> it was like the Fuck! <laughs> I'm young for my age. Class. Whatever. Uh, there you go. I'm drunk, bitch. Shut up. <laughs> and then I remember in Georgia, like, Jack and Rob, my buddies, they'd be like, Oh, did you watch the South Park episode last week? And I'm like, no. I got tired of that shit about, like, 6th, 7th grade. And they're they're laughing about the, <clears throat> the show and shit. It, it's weird, though, how... You sneak shit around your parents and, like, get introduced to dirty shit when you're young. And then people later discover it. It's like, yeah, that shit ain't funny anymore. You know? <clears throat> My mom used to not let me watch uh, The Simpsons. It's too dirty, and they see things like crap and hell, and you can't watch that. And then I remember South Park coming on, and I was like, oh, that's not too bad. You can watch it. I was like, oh. And I watched it for years. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh my god, you, you let me do this? I can't I can't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> the one seconds. time you comment on a live video, you gotta talk shit on me. <laughs> so question, is anybody else experiencing like not enjoying this beer as much because of the previous beer that No, we I actually really like this beer. I'm getting some like some acid coming up in here from that fucking juniper berry. Not agreeing with me at all. Maybe it was your lunch, not the fucking juniper berry. Uh, I think I know my system, <laughs> and it, I keep burping juniper berry, and it like it's making this <clears throat> less enjoyable. You know what I gotta say? I miss Neff. Why is that? Because it's so quiet without him. What's up, Amy? Isn't it nice? Thanks for joining. Jason's taking a shit, or... <laughs> Jesus. I don't really talk to her at work, but... 
he joins the cast room once in a while, and I felt like being funny. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, this beer, it's review time, too. You want to go first? Yeah, this is my pick. Okay. Yeah, I totally will. Uh, here, let's go with a fresh one. One sec. This is a really crisp and uh, it's, it's dry. Uh. I would say like Budweiser uh, alternative. Uh, it's like Kansas Territory's take on just like a generic Pilsner. That's what I was going to say. Uh, I mean, it's the life coach. Yeah, uh. They say lager. Um, there's nothing that jumps out and says, uh, uh. you know, that grabs a hold of you and that you know really kind of like says that it's unique, but it's really drinkable. I would say, uh, I w I'd be curious. Like I said, the other beer is affecting me a little bit, but I I'd be curious to start with this one. I would say it's a really crisp, dry. I don't know beer. why we always show the fucking color when we got the small screen. Oh no, clean bro. There we go. And you put this in later. The old one. There we go. Did, uh, did Brad make you guys play Magic with him? <laughs> no. We Good. weren't even like, fuck that guy. And Magic. Go ahead with your review. Uh, but that being said, I'm still not crazy about it. Ooh. I would say I do... This does not have as many off notes as the, uh, the other beer. I'll give this a six, uh, as opposed to the five earlier. Wow. There's nothing that, that is crazy amazing about it. A, a pretty, pretty generic. Yeah. Taste it. Beer. I wouldn't even call it like a craft. watery. I mean, it's just kind of watery. It's kind of just a regular domestic ass beer. Oh. Yeah. A domestic lager. Maybe a transition from. I don't, I don't even know if it would transition from Budweiser. It's definitely smoother. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it's smoother than Bud. Yeah. Sure. You want six? I want six. <clears throat> I'm gonna go seven for this one. I think it's drinkable. It's a lager I like, and I'm a fan of lagers. Um, I don't know if I'd I'd buy it, but I wouldn't buy it over like a, a traditional craft or something that has a little more to it. But it's a good summer beer. I think, especially for a lager. <clears throat> like the Sam 76 is kind of on that level to where it's almost uh, almost craft, almost domestic. It's kind of in that medium. It's cheap. That's for certain. That's what they're going for it to sell as your domestic. And that makes sense because they sell it in a fucking 30 pack and a 15 pack of cans. And I think this may be K Kansas Territory's only can if not yeah. one of their few so yeah props, I mean, props to them i would buy this over a bud light or a budweiser what i say uh, oh, yeah. seven yeah. yeah i'm gonna stick with that uh i would definitely buy that over i mean just just to support something that wasn't a huge conglomerate mm -hmm. uh something that was made here in kansas yep. uh they're doing it just as good, as good but in my opinion better than you know, the way that those taste, but... And I used to love fucking Budweiser. Budweiser bottles? God damn, I drank them a lot. This, this was beats drink. it. Yep. This beats it out of a can. And I don't like drinking shit out of a can, either. Where can I? So I've had that discussion at least twice just this week. Uh, oh, you don't think you like craft beers? Well, what do you drink? I'm Bud Light. What do you drink now? Coors Light. And I'm like, I used to be like you back yeah. when I... Back when I was young and unexperienced, and, <laughs> or inexperienced, I guess it would be. But I, I actually think that this is a great replacement if you are drinking a domestic. Uh, this would be a perfect replacement for Top your Coors Light. Replacement. Your Coors Light. Uh, your Coors Light Bank or beer. your uh, your Bud Light or your Budweiser or your whatever. Uh, I can. I'm gonna have to give this an eight. I, I would actually buy this again. I would. I would absolutely stock a cooler full of this if I was inviting a bunch of people over. Uh, the, instead of buying craft beers because it gets a little pricey, this would be the beer that I'd throw in there like, hey, here's a good transition beer for you. But this also makes, like I make a bunch of mixed drinks that 
include beer, this would be the beer that I'd go to for that. And you know nice both sides would like it. Yeah. It, it's a nice light beer. It's It doesn't have any overwhelming flavor one way or the other, but it doesn't have... It actually doesn't have that finishing beer flavor to it. So it's actually just very, very light, very smooth, very crisp, and it has a clean finish. It's not bad at all. I, the back I end really, is very smooth. Yeah, I really like this. It's it's easy to get through. Uh, I mean, you're compar- it's a lager. You're comparing it to the other lagers, which are Budweiser and Coors. It's better than both of those, easy. I mean, and I learned at Boulevard down. this week. Not that, not to interrupt you. No, no. Please. I learned at Boulevard Brewing that lagers are one of the most pain in the ass beers to brew. Hmm. Like they take the most attention, most time out of any beer that you try to brew from scratch. What is that? Really? I don't call it details. God damn it! You you drank too many of their <laughs> other beers by yes. that point. <laughs> hmm. They had a ch- cookie going. Oh. Go ahead. They had a chocolate cookie stout. Oh. That's kind of amazing. It was amazing, but it was robust. Like, it, you could tell... Like one and done? It'll punch you in the mouth after one or two. Ooh. I only had a little five-ouncer, and it was enough. Yep. Yeah. I can see that. No, mm-hmm. I, I, your, your point of, if, I'm, if I have a party and I'm going to stock the cooler, mm-hmm. doing this versus some of the you know generic alternatives, okay. that's, that's the best way to describe it. Oh, yeah. I would do that every time. I, yeah. I've... Absolutely changed my mind on that. Like I have a, on my porch right now is a cooler full of Coors Light. If I would have known about this beer mm. two weeks ago, whenever I did that, I never would have bought Coors Light. I will always now, from this point going forward, replace that with this whenever possible. I'm gonna have to it's, see if my mom will try it. So she's a Coors Light fiend. Oh yeah, I bet you. She's always drank Coors Light. I I would almost guarantee you that this would be something that would replace that. Is it only? It doesn't have those same sweet notes. Like sometimes you drink a couple Coors Light and you're like, ah, it's it's a little sweet. Like you can almost feel it in your teeth. You know, it's kind of that thing. I don't get that with this at all. Like it cuts back on that sugar, but it's got every bit of that flavor, Mm -hmm. uh, and it it doesn't replace anything else with whatever. Actually, what's the ABV on this? I I looked. I couldn't find it. No. No shit. Yeah, I looked. Uh, It doesn't appear to be printed on the can at all. Yep. Google it. Is it not on the box? I don't know. Well, I thought it has to be in the box. Here, I got the box right here. Let me check. Well, knocking shit over. Let's see, because I'm pretty sure Coors is 4.4, if it's not 4.2. 5% on the dot. I there think. we go. I mean, already, it's better. Yeah, what is it, 3.2 usually? No, it's uh, Coors Light's 4.4, four, I would say. I mean, it's... Uh... It's not bad, but this, if it is, in fact... Yeah, five uh, on the dot. Yeah, I mean, you're getting more for it. It may cost you a little bit extra, maybe, maybe, but you're definitely getting it in quality. I, this this would absolutely be my go-to just plain beer, I guess. I'm not If I'm not shooting for a flavor, if I'm just shooting for uh, beer to drink all day, it's light enough I can do that. It doesn't have those lingering flavors. Uh, it's it's the lager I'll, I'll probably turn to from now on. It, it doesn't only come in a six pack. Yeah. <laughs> and I've got to say, it's uh, of all the ones I've had so far, it's my favorite Kansas store territory beer. So I I like it. I I really like it. It's an eight. Have you had the roller the roller chain? Yep. We had that on the we had that on the show. <laughs> I like that beer. I really. Oh, like I know beer. you. You still talk about I still it. Still buy it. It was one of our. It was within our first ten. Within our yeah, first ten. I still so, buy it. That's one of my. Uh, I and I like that, and I like the Wind Wagon. Uh, mm. It's their IPA. Mm. Um, I don't know. They're just something about hops. Hops are my thing. I like them. I don't. I don't get it. I mean the, the hops is the one thing I'm like. It's just it, to me, it's really piney. I there are some beers that we've had, or some IPAs, or even pale ales, where I'm like, okay, I can absolutely understand the hops in this, and it just it gives it a subtle note. It, it, it's it's really just a note to where other beers, it's really an overwhelming flavor, and even on others in the IPA field, it's it makes it dry, and it makes it have a bite at the end to where like it it'll dry out your tongue. And I'm like, how would this be a good beer? 
And I mean, that's that's where you and I differ. But I'm, I I always see that. I'm like, why why would you think this is a good beer? But then sometimes you review it much higher. And I'm like, it must. I mean, we're all very different, but it it just really must appeal to that field of characteristic. And I don't know what it is about the the hot flavor because I I just get pine notes. So I don't know if there's something more that you get out of it. Do you get a more citrusy note, a more flowery note? Yeah. Do you yeah. get florals? I do. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever tasted an actual floral note from a hops. So, I, I mean, there, there, there's a difference as far as, I mean, when the hops are added, whether they're added for bitterness, whether they're at, they're dry hops, Flavor. and yep. just for aroma. Most of the time, dry hopping is just aroma. Uh, it doesn't have, it doesn't impart too much taste. To the uh, to the beer a little bit, but d- it also depends on the type of hop. Uh, different hops taste I forget differently. About that. There, there uh, are there's, there's thousands different, of them. There's different hops just in the U.S., but there's also hops from overseas that uh, some of ours are less floral mm-hmm. and less citrusy. So maybe uh, have you had the uh, ninety minute hop IPA? Rockfish head. Yeah, have you I, had it? I've had. I think so. It might have been a while. Maybe I'll have to try that and see if that's something that works better for me. Because mm-hmm. I, I I want to get to the point where I'm like, oh, okay, I can understand the like of this, but I, I, I don't. But, I don't know. I, I'm really just hoping that Sours are the next big takeoff and they replace all IPAs. I'll, t- I'll tell you, <laughs> when I had my first Sour, I remember it. Dustin, my buddy from Kansas City. He had one, and he was like, yo, this is kind of the new thing that's happening. Give it a try. Hated it. Mm-hmm. Hated it. Just like the first IPA I tried. Hated it. Uh, but then as, like, I don't know, more and more of my friends had them, and it just kind of forced me to, you know, to continue to drink them. And then I'm like, okay, shit, this is really good. Yeah. I, mean, I, I see redeeming qualities in them. Uh, and the sour, I mean, this show, the amount of sours we've had in this show is out of control. Yeah, we and, got a ton. And now I like sours. When we started, I didn't like sours. Yeah. I'm a big sours fan now. Like, that, that's why I was They're saying awesome. I really hope they become the next big thing just because I'm like, dude, they, they have been on great. a hot day. They have been great. Out in so. the sun on the patio or something. Look at you, you fatty. Bro. What are you doing? Hey, if anybody wants some free food, Hit me up. I'll message you my address. You can have some enchiladas. <laughs> or chicken enchiladas. You say that, and then instead somebody's just going to send you a dick pic and be like, where's my food? You yeah. can eat this. Where's my food? And then I'll block them. <laughs> and say your dick is inferior. <laughs> so, <laughs> unfortunately, well, I mean, these haven't been the highest reviewing uh, beers that we've had. Mm-hmm. Uh Almost everybody shat on Chris's beer. His uh, fine. His juniper berry. It. I think mountain. one of the descriptions on it is complex. Yeah, the very first description is complex. Uh, I like the life coach. It quite a bit. The I I would agree that the the old soul is complex. I mean, it's you've really got to be searching for something in that flavor. But I also think. That would be a much better beer on a cold day. I think that would be a much better cold weather beer. I think, I, I, I mean, I've talked to a, people on different sides of gin. There are some people that Ooh, love gin. Pounders of Life, Coach, coming soon. There are some people that hate gin. Uh, What's up, I, I'm Bill? kind of in that in-between. Right. Uh I can see what people who like it like, and I can also see what people who hate it, why they hate it. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that in, sorry, is that Intel? Are you from uh, KT? Because I haven't, <laughs> Kansas Territory. No, God I haven't recognized this guy on our chat before, so and thought I'd ask. What's the name? Anton, and Anton? Scoville, something <sighs> like that. Hey, what's up, Neff? What up, Neff? An hour late. I see you joining. An hour late? Yep. An hour late. Chris is over here eating fucking enchiladas like a goddamn barbarian. Yeah, boy. Uh, We don't know what's going on. We're lost. I gotta get my food on. We're like a ship without a rudder. We're just going in circles. That's why I can choke Tate out tomorrow at Jits. Oh, you gotta gotta fuel up. You better eat five or six more of them if you think you're gonna accomplish (laughs) anything and hear that. Pack a lunch, because when when you're done whooping his ass, you're gonna be hungry. That's right. Is that it? (laughs) Oh, man. Mm. 
The office guy. All right, cool. I nice. The op the office. What what's that? Uh, I'm gonna assume the office guy for Kansas territory. Oh, cool. Hey, yeah. thank you. Thanks for joining and coming, man. That's we, awesome. We liked your guys' beer more than the other one. Uh, uh, I actually liked it quite a bit. Like I said, this will be my go-to lager. Your your uh, your party beer. Oh yeah. You, this... you got people coming over. You want to have something that just you know everybody will like. Yeah, and that'll go. Over They'll smoothly. be like, I don't want that and, shit, and you go try it, motherfucker. And it's not ten dollars. I'll be like, pack. oh, that's all right. Yeah, no, yeah, it's it's affordable. I like it, that about it's it. Absolutely affordable. Yep. I I do that, and I'm gonna have to try with these. Uh, we usually make what I call a bloody beer. It's basically a, a our bloody mary recipe, but instead of vodka, we use beer to to kind of lighten it up and add some some notes to it. And we usually use Coors Light, but I actually think this is going to make the better beer for that. It's not going to add that sweetness. It'll add. <laughs> Chris of this. doesn't always eat on the show. Yeah, good point, Will. <laughs> uh, so this reminds me of uh, essentially what I think it was Boulevard. They have the Daybreak, uh, which is oh, like yeah. the one with the sun it. on it. Uh, like you see these breweries that are you know producing craft beers, but they also want to appear or appeal to like a just the the standard non-craft market, and they produce uh, uh, essentially like a Budweiser, Bud Light alternative. Mm -hmm. Boulevard has the Daybreak. I think it's Boulevard. I say that. I could be wrong. Pretty sure. But, and then, you know, Kansas Plus Territory the has the, uh, the... what? Boulevard Wheat. Pretty... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, not Boulevard. New Belgium. Not Boulevard mm -hmm. at all. New Belgium Daybreak. Uh, it's, e it's either New Belgium or Odell. Okay. I fucked that up. Sorry. Alexa, Google New Belgium Daybreak. <laughs> Did you mean black dildos and toilet paper? Uh, it's been a cooler beer for a couple of years. Uh, yep. I, I do like it. Uh, this is going to be my the, the beer that takes up the back of my fridge. Uh, if you see my fridge now, top shelf, iced tea, milk, some, actually, the vegetables are on the top shelf. Middle shelf, all salsas and pickles. Bottom shelf, mustard. And mustard. Yes, you're right. <laughs> I, I've got like 14 different mustards. But those flow into the door. Jeez. And then hot sauces. Uh, and then the bottom shelf is the beers that I have to turn sideways to fit in there. And then on the one side is Lily's lunch stuff uh, for, for school. And then the other side is cheese. So that's... That those are our drawers. Essentials. Yeah. Essentials. Yeah. I mean, that, and then I've got two freezers just completely full of meat, and then we never eat any of it. No, I, yeah, that's true. Amy did just turn 30. <laughs> and Amy who? This is the first time I've ever ate on cast, I think. Nope. God, Pizza you last week. Fat you did it. fuck. I don't know if I ate on cast. You did. I pizza. know you and I you plowed through a... Y'all destroyed right most of that pizza. They, they were right here. No. There, was, there was pizza last really... week. <laughs> I don't remember the pizza. Yes, there was there was pizza. Uh, I remember that one last week. That was it was the week before. before. I remember mounting down on some crackers, we're, we're some toilet crackers. Toilet crackers <laughs> <laughs> with, with Chris on cast. Give it a hammered, toilet. just fucking oh, like crack it toilet. <laughs> Damn, bowl of saltines. Yeah, we were eating some saltines. <laughs> they were good too. Oh. Yo, Antonio, thanks for tuning in. Is it Antonio? No. Antonio? I want to say Anton. Anton, thanks for tuning or in. Or Anthony. Uh, we do beer reviews. Oh, and, maybe, uh, maybe. Correct us. Pronunciation. Do it in a... What's the thing called whenever you go to Webster Dictionary and it does the... Shroop -de -shroop -shroop. Phonetic? Phone phonetic. Eh, maybe phonetic. Phonetic pronunciation. Yeah. Phonetic. yeah. Uh, yeah, we do beer reviews. We This is our second Camp's Territory oh, Brew. Yeah. Nathan was here. 39. Smash Pizza. Oh, we what call must have been here? We did do chips and salsa. Oh man, dude, we had a little chips and salsa stand set up. Hey, everybody it was everybody, everybody kept camera. going to the bathroom. My fucking wife went to at least for the night. <laughs> I was like, bitch, she did, bitch, ah, <sighs> yeah, bitch. We got enchiladas here. Yeah, bitch. I had I had enchiladas Saturday. <clears throat> they they've been at my house since, so I don't. I don't know. We got chicken enchiladas. Julie knows about the crackers. I yeah. made an amazing. <laughs> Julie, they were good. Chicken enchilada sauce. So, 
It was green sauce, sour cream, cilantro, mayo. Right over the top, mixed with Mexican cheese. Okay. Boof. Rabbit trail Boof. to a different fucking dimension. Oh. Uh, apologize for anybody who doesn't like politics, and I actually... Oh, have... no. Is this going to be off the Iran deal today? I was going to ask you about the Iran oh, deal. shit. Do you have any knowledge of what... what I, I am totally ignorant. Totally ignorant. Uh, of any of the repercussions or what it might be or any of that. So the repercussions were they weren't supposed to do shit for at least another 10 years. This would basically almost give them permission to do it today. Give who permission to do what? Iran. Permission to start developing nuclear weapons. So the the fact that the UN didn't pull out of it is great. And the fact that Iran and Tehran uh, are good with continuing with their accord great on them it's really bad on us it's really really bad on us and especially for foreign deals it basically says sure we're willing to make deals but you know what when the new president comes in fuck that it took us 10 years to make that deal 10 years took us 18 months to destroy it was that Kerry Uh, uh, he ran for president Kerry whatever his first name is John Kerry? John, yeah. Was yeah. he the Secretary Secretary of State that kind of like worked with that deal? I want to say way back when, yeah. He, I mean, he did, but it was a it was a ten year deal, so he he did work on it for a little bit. But no, I mean it it went time and time and time and time and time. There was a ton of investment into it, and that was one of the things. Like they had to reduce uh, the lethal level of I want to say it was uranium that they could have uh, at any given point. From concentration 70% to under 0.3%. Correct me if I'm wrong, it might have been 3%, I'm but gonna... it was the difference between being able to blow up a fucking country and being able to blow up a house. And that was the very, that, that gonna, was the difference. I'm going to throw this out here. I, I don't know all the details, but if we're giving them an okay, they're like, oh yeah, you can go right ahead. It, it wasn't the okay, it was, we were like, we're going to come back and we're going to come back harder because fuck you and don't destroy America. But until we come back harder, you're free to do whatever you want. And then, then they're like, you fucked us, America. Why wouldn't in the next 10 years that it takes you to develop this plan, See, why wouldn't we fuck you? That alone's bullshit because we probably got people working for them. Oh, I, I would imagine. We're, we're showing them how it's done. It, yeah. What's up, Devo? But it Just it was, like the whole fucking... Oh, where's heroin come from? Uh, probably our... Iraq. Probably our troops <laughs> protecting the poppy fields. Iraq. You, you know, since we started doing... Uh, since, since we... We have... That's a sore subject, though. I gone think. to Iraq. Since we've gone to Iraq. Maybe it's not us. But opium production and opium distribution in the U.S. has That's gone boomed. up tenfold. Boom. Tenfold. Tenfold. And heroin since, deaths. Since 2001. Heroin deaths. I mean, there's no correlation. There's obviously no correlation. Look at that ass. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> gotcha, bitch. <laughs> she didn't appear on camera at all. Totally fucking snuck she in. She looks like an 80s tablecloth. Her audio like did. Her, that's, <laughs> well, and just the pure distraction that all of us are watching her. If you don't know, this chick... If you don't know, this now chick you know. was just like sticking her ass up in the air. And she was kind of like shimmying across the floor in here. It was weird. Mm. We don't know who she was. We should get some of these. I'm, I'm waiting until aftercast. The hot one's on the right. What are you oh, getting? Don't do don't do it again. What, what is oh, this? He's doing it again. Is this some sort of card game? Is this like a mating ritual mystery? This is a, this is a dance. Rummy? Oh, is that what good. it says? I can't watch. <laughs> I can't watch. Yes, this is. This is like rummy. watching mystery Rummy. Fuck <laughs> you guys. You're the worst. Yeah, Julie, get out. There you go now. Get the fudge out. It's boys day. Yeah, Tuesdays are for the boys. Tuesdays for the boys! Mm. No, that that deal was not I, I, I have zero understanding of it. Um, they actually had a really great episode of uh, John Oliver tonight. Talking Two about weeks it? ago? Yeah. Okay. That, that broke it down. And I love they John Oliver. Like, yeah. Man, he's good. It's so sad to see that some of the things that he breaks down, you're like, oh, man, that's crazy. Why don't people understand that more? And you're like, oh, yeah, because before 12 minutes ago, I didn't understand it either. Yeah. So that, that makes sense. I, I get it. That's what's good about 
if we do talk about politics a little bit on the show is we can kind of translate shit for people sometimes instead of them going, oh, I'm going to read this headline and just hate this person or this topic. or mm-hmm. There's kind of a viewpoint from people within the same city or uh, age group, region, age group. I, I really think yeah. age groups are more of a thing. Than, age groups are massive. Than, You're right. than you'd believe. Because the, the older generation, and, and I hate to say this, especially in Kansas, they're all pro-Trump. They're, they are absolutely, you can do no wrong, you you could literally grow <clears throat> horns, and we'd be like, America, America. Po- pro so Trump. it's And I don't like that about him, but I... Can you say pro-Trump, or, but I or still like Republican. Rogan? So, I'm on he, my, he's like, I think if Trump wasn't president, I would like him. That, he, likes he would find his, common ground. He would find common ground. He, he, yeah. Before uh, he ran this year, he supported Hillary. Or before he ran two years ago, he supported Hillary. I don't, I don't yeah. support Oh, any. no, they're, they're fucking like this. Yeah. The Clintons and the fucking Trumps, yeah. Oh, it, I mean, it, it's nuts. It, it, it was nuts. But then ever since he ran, he's like, oh, fuck her. She's terrorist and basically Satan. Also, she she's Obama's wife. <laughs> like, that's that's what he's he's been going after. Like, that. You're the worst. You're the worst thing since ever. Oh, I've always hated politics and uh, the administration, no matter who the fuck's around the country. Yeah, I, I just oh, hope no, that me. one day Got it. Got it. our generation can fix shit. It, it's going to take a while. I and really by the time fucking hope so. We're ready to do it. It's already going to change. So that that's what sucks, is we're always going to be a generation behind in that. Why? It, just because of how quickly it is to adapt. I talked to somebody the other day. Uh, it wasn't the other day. It was a year ago. And their whole point was, hey, we're at the point now where we can do individual votes, but we shouldn't because it's not representative of the populace. And I, was, I said to them, that makes absolutely no sense. Bullshit. If, if every single person is getting their vote, how is that not representative of the populace? They said, well, the minority isn't going to have a voice. I said, Exactly, because they'd be a minority. That's exactly the case. The minority should be a minority. Not not minority as in race, but the minority of the opinion and of the belief. And they were like, well, the what vote. if it's Kansas farmers and not every other place is farmers, and they're not going to have the same voice? And said, you're absolutely right, but what gives them the right to carry more more voice and more sway? So you do it there's, percentage-based there's, there's by not. that fact. Yeah, I mean, how many farmers are there, and this percentage of farmers support this? Yeah, hello. I mean, you you could you could come up. I mean, it would probably take you to to come if up with a very fair. Seven out of ten farmers yeah, think this. That's their fucking stance. To come up with a very fair algorithm, you could absolutely do that, and then you could do it based on section. Okay, so yeah. you meet this criteria. You are a white farmer from Kansas. What? So you plug into this piece, and that is. If your section wins this percentage, that's a percentage of the total. You could absolutely do that. You could absolutely do that rather than it being the the representative that we have now to where it's like the whole state, our whole entire state could vote Democrat. And then we could have a Republican representative and then then vote Republican. And we have no say in that. We have absolutely no choice in that. Yep. It, or it could vote against all the policies that we it's believe It's broken in. because we, somebody didn't we don't have to think do about shit on the front end when creating something as big of a scale as something like it is. Yeah. They were like, oh, we'll just fucking deal with it later. Yeah. And now we are. We, we absolutely and, are. And nobody knows how to fix it other than, like, somebody good actually going in even though they won't have the fucking corrupt business money to get it done. I'm trying to think of the place that did it That's recently. exactly what's wrong. But it was a the voting... people getting it done are corrupt as fuck and getting money from that. It was a voting app, and it was so that it didn't have to take back from you, because generally a phone is representative of one person, especially if there's a bill associated with it. But it was, you scan in your ID, which was, just it takes a PDF of your ID, and you could vote on your phone. And they had an 85% turnout rate. 85 in our, to 46 and that was in our that was in obama that that was obama 
that we had a 46%. That was one of our highest turnouts in the last 30 years. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, well, that, that makes this was sense. so huge. It just, you didn't have to go out of your way. You didn't have to take time off work. And it was literally click, click, boom, done. We're, we're completely done with this. So, but imagine there, if, there's a lot more stuff that we could do. Imagine if there were this. never a, a white president running for office. And mm-hmm. then all of a sudden there was. I'd fucking vote that year. I mean, <laughs> One of, way of way course the there are going to be influx of votes. I, get I don't it. fucking blame them. Like, fuck no, yeah. No, no, I, I absolutely get it. it. It's It was very different. But then again, this was, well, I, I guess Jill Stein has run a few years. Mm-hmm. It, though she's run as independent and she's run with very little of the vote. But as a majority, uh, a major party representative, Hillary was the first woman president. I don't believe that she was. She, I don't believe that she was the right person to be our first woman president. Fuck no. So I, no. I completely agree but with that. But at the same time, I bet the most women voted ever. Yes, but a lot of them voted against their their better interest in that. I I remember being yeah. at work. And I'm not going to name names here, but somebody that I worked with at the time said, I absolutely hate Trump's policies, and I hate who he is as a person, but I hate Hillary more. I'm going to vote for Trump. It should never be those are your two options. Oh, no, that's the it worst thing. It should never be that those are your two options. A bag of farts or a turd sandwich. Yeah. Whatever you want. <laughs> that's how it is every year, though. A bag yeah. of farts or a turd sandwich. Literally. Uh, I, I mean, literally, I, I, I can identify with both. With this past election, I can identify with both sides so much more than in past elections mm-hmm. because I hated both candidates so much. I'm like, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, that's why you can identify with them. The sorry thing is, though, the sorry thing is, people bitch about these candidates yep. so much. But if you were to run next year, or I were, or Tate were, nobody would fucking vote for you, even though you may have the kindness in your fucking heart. The the worst thing is, I. As this generation, I have absolutely no idea how we're supposed to get started. If I wanted to run for a city council or an elective position just in the city, yep. I have absolutely no idea how to do it. Yep. I have absolutely no I idea would how like to do to, it in the state, but I, I have no idea how one of us would go about that. I don't start even know a where to start. Campaign party. We are and all about bros, bros and bullshit. We are about beer, community, and life. <laughs> but, no, it, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it's really hard. And I, I have to think to myself, how, how did people do it in the past? But then we've had a political science major, which is what most people have come from. But then it comes back to, I want to say it was Thomas Jefferson. And it was... Anybody who seeks political power should never have political power, but that's literally who gets it. That's Do you have political science as your, your major in college? No? Then you don't know anything about politics. Okay. Is that true, though? What? People who... They, they say absolute power... Is that power, statement true? With absolute power comes absolute corruption. Is And it's been that's, correct for a very long time. That's a pretty blanket statement. It, it has proven true over and over and over and over and over again. That's I mean, of, but that's because half the people getting power were corrupt from the, from the get-go. Absolutely, because they had to go through a corrupt system to, to get the power. That, that means the system is corrupt. Oh, yes. It, absolutely. It's just broken from the found, Sh- foundation. It's you not, are literally saying Chappelle. Chappelle said that exact same thing. He said the system is corrupt. The entire thing is corrupt from the bottom up. They're all corrupt. They're, it can never be uncorrupted until we change the entire thing. Yeah. So there's you, a revolt. You build a new system. You you either kill off the fucking pieces of shit that are in power, or you build a new system and go, hey, we're not going to pay attention to you. So before there was 20... And you get your own military. Yeah. And you... So military is always supposed to support the majority of the people. I've talked the, to a, not quite a public. few military guys. Not the public. And they would support the public instead of the government. You would hope, but it would be based on the hope. Man. That's not where their paycheck comes yeah, from. Yeah, exactly. That, that's the thing. That's true, but you, you almost have to put faith in but just Brad was in the military. I would, never, I would never expect Brad not to Look what happened in and fucking during the... <laughs> in, Germany during the Holocaust. What do you guys think? Basic humanity or where your paycheck comes? What do you obey? Well, 
that part I can understand too. It was so they recruit me and Chris, and you're our best friend in the world. And we're like, yo, bro, we're on this boat. So it's either you be on our boat with your best friends, or you get the fuck out of my country and I'll have to kill you. And you're like, well, I fucking love my friends, and I love my family, and I love being protected. Fuck. What's would, up, bros? I would never succumb I mean, to some shit like that. You, I, I would shoot my way out. You, you say that, but the way that they did it was so subconscious social engineering it, it was it was absolutely ridiculous i mean you had absolutely no choice it was like oh you you like coffee and everything. oh so you you're totally with us i get how that is and we're we're still good friends and everything is going and then you're this whole time you're buying into this piece over here and you're like this is who i am as a person it, oh they're trying to they're trying to take that away from me as a person no fucking way today i'm gonna is, go for that today is not like, a lot different than that it, uh, i mean it's it's nuts to the see way they things. have basically tunnel visioned society into their phone oh yeah and so, divided and i have all that, that shit dude. I, I think i've had that conversation with you 50 years ago if there was no 24-hour news or internet do you think the same shit that happens today would happen no, no people would march on the streets and they would tear down government buildings fucking week after week until this stuff changed I mean, now it takes a, a Black Lives Matter now everybody's just on their fucking phone. Don't or care. 15 school shootings in a week in order for people to actually do something about it. But there were things before that that were huge to us. Can you imagine... Can you imagine enough evidence coming against Kennedy or Nixon way back in the 60s that was he grabbed her by the pussy and he set it on fucking TV? Yeah. Or, you know, anything like that. Or he fucking banged the porn star. Or anything like that. And it came to light. And can you imagine any of those things coming to light and people supporting <laughs> it because there wasn't some other news topic that just came immediately after. Just immediately after. It away. Not, not, not two days later. Not, not two hours later. Two minutes later. Not something that big two minutes later that it could just wash it all away. And that everybody had... A way to receive. Mm -hmm. It's the shrinking world effect, but it works absolutely on us as a country way quicker. We see that news not in minutes, not even in section, section, seconds. It we gets, see it immediately. Something can I mean, happen it, five minutes from now, and a viewer goes, "Yes, hey guys, did you, hey, see, did this? you see this?" Yeah, I mean, it would it would happen immediately. It's the same thing with celebrity deaths now. I mean, the second it's breaking news. Everybody in this room knows about it. Or they're posting memes. No, we're doing something right now. We'd know about it. Too soon? <laughs> yeah. It, Jesus. It's, For real. it's fucking nuts. It goes through that quick, but it also goes by that quick. And it has to do with our attention spans because we can glue to this and we can... We have infinite knowledge at our fingertips. Is it worth occupying our brain space for that? Can I do something about it immediately? No, it's not worth my time. Yeah. And can I do something about it by myself? No, it's not worth my time. And we have, it has bred introverts. It has bred people who to keep away from each other and not share those common themes. You, you don't go, maybe you. No, I doubt I, you. you know I what? definitely know not me. When's the last time you grilled out with your next door neighbor? I never have. Not frequently. Yeah, once or twice a year. But we've it, talked about it, like, oh yeah, we should July Fourth close off the block and barbecue and drink beer, and then we've been here three years, three and yeah, three years. Ain't happened yet. But it, it doesn't happen anymore. But that used to be a thing back in the fifties and sixties. You, your neighbor was your best friend. You guys had a lot in common. You got, you guys had a similar build in house because you guys had a similar build in interest. You needed that garage space to do your woodworking and to do. Your, your repair on cars, and you, you started a guy's club to do this and that. You started this guy's club to drink beer, and you guys all had a common interest, and it, it was it was something. You guys represented a group. It's really uncommon now. It's really, really uncommon. I mean, that's why you, if you ever go online anymore, you find so many people complaining that it's hard to make friends as an adult. Yeah, it's hard to make friends as an adult because you don't associate with people. The people that you work with, even though you do the same job, you guys don't have the same personality. You work next to people and you don't have the same personality. You you don't do things together because you do so many events and so many things that drive you apart from 
TV and hobbies and you what you look at on the internet and the the things that you identify with and, and your age group and uh, where you went to school and everything yeah, like that bro. that it <laughs> it drives you apart it drives those huge wedges so did you go to KU or K State you went to KU I went to K State See, we're automatically not friends. that whole thing's bullshit I mean man. we we are driving yeah. each other apart from things the that whole, shouldn't I was born here in the U S so I'm gonna cheer against another country bullshit. Cheer for the best guy. We do the same thing on a high school level. Yeah. You you go you against a rivalry the, against the town. Against the next county over. Yeah. You, you have or that. Or in the same city. And like it stops you from identifying. Rival. It stops you from grouping as a person. Yep. It's a tribal it, mentality. It, yeah. it goes, oh, people that go to South, you shouldn't like. It's called human. It's just human nature. Well, it is, but it ain't. No, it, it, it is, but it is. It is from, like, war backgrounds and, like, tri- tribality, but... High school to high school, it shouldn't be like that. It should be, maybe the best team win, but we don't fucking hate you. We respect you as people. It should be more of a sport mentality rather than a rivalry. So, do you know who does that? Too much, I mean, when you look at human history, it, it's, it's definitely <laughs> not sporting it, in any way. I mean, just rivals in anything kill each other. That thought process is much more of a liberal thought process. It's not something that comes from a conservative process. I mean, look at a, a oh. Texas town compared to a man, what, what's a really great example of a, uh, of a liberal town? Seattle. Uh, of a Washington town. Do you think that they hate their rivals in Washington? Now they're like, well, I guess we're going to go out and play football today. It's fucking raining again. Because we're in Seattle. But put Seattle versus Texas, to, yeah. and Texas were in a slip and throw. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Texas to the next county. I mean, whoever's in Houston to the next What's county up, is going to want to fucking do it. So it's... Old soul was kind of, meh. I, I'm finishing my second one now, even though I started on it first. You're still on that, bitch? It's a, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's a hard, hard drink. It's I, not bad, but it's not a... It's complex. Uh, I rated it higher than I feel about it now because it took me <laughs> thirty minutes to recover from that second beer. Yeah, like to where it's not affecting me as much here now. It got a six and a half from me, a four from Jason, mm, five, and a five from Tate. The, the juniper berries are just—they're off-putting. The life coach, I get a seven, but, eight. The life coach, yes, it was my eight. I, I like one of six. And a six. Solid drinking beer. Yeah. The life coach. Life very, coach. very much so. I'm about to get another one. <laughs> we've, we've got three extra. His neff. <laughs> uh, what time are we going to end this tonight? It'll mm-hmm. probably be early. Sure. Soonish. Soonish. Two and a half. I just hate how <clears throat> there are so many problems with the foundation of life across the nation and world yet nobody's actually actively i mean not nobody but tons of people millions of people aren't actively trying to figure out how to fix shit it doesn't they affect just your go, life on a day-to-day basis exactly because they design it to where we're distracted from a bunch of bullshit like working a 40 that's bullshit I completely agree with working a 40 bullshit. Give people a life salary. But even if it's fucking $300 a month, give people something across the nation. So do you know how the 40-hour work week was started? And it's going to suck. I've, because I've heard about it, but I don't recall. Socialists. Socialists started the 40-hour work week. It was for your religion, you get a day off, which is Sunday. For your community and for yourself, you should get a day off on Saturday. And then other than that, you should work Monday through Friday. That was the agreement. That was the understanding of socialism. The fact that society is so brainwashed that even though I can get 40 hours worth worth of work done by an average Joe in probably 18 hours, I can't. I can't actively get that 18-hour salary every week and kick ass and get paid as much as that Joe Schmo is bullshit because we're in Slonikans and the Chamber of Commerce goes, 
Yeah, we don't allow shit like that. I've done. If anybody uh, heard about that? I've done enough automation in the system at work now to where in any given day, just a given day, I do a minimum of forty hours worth of uh, resolution. I'll never see the, the end of that. It took me six hours to make a script, but it saves 40 hours a day. I'll never see the return. I'll never ever I, see the return. I think about it every day, being like frugal as fuck, and just saying peace. Disconnect? Yep. I will totally every invest. Every day it crosses my mind. I will invest with you on a cabin house that has multiple bedrooms, and we can fish. And plan it for food any day of the week that you want. You let me know six months in advance. I will save up twenty grand and move away in the woods with you. <laughs> it's seriously sad that I'm finally making decent money and I'm still not happy because the people and the ego and the just the bullshit that's involved with happiness increases between forty and seventy five thousand a year. After seventy five thousand, it actually decreases. But it does not increase until 40,000 a year. Like, I'm just hitting the the lower end of that, and I'm still not content. It, it's it's hard, but during that oh, range, like there's a there's an increase. And, and maybe. Where did you get that? Uh, it was actually a, a psychology thing. It was, I want to say, 2,500 people. Per person were, or per household? Uh, per person. Per person, per person starting at 40? Yeah. Yeah. But it was done on 2,500 <laughs> people uh, within within that range, and it went from uh, 18,000 a year to 250,000 a year, and it was your average happiness level and your worries level. And I've it heard was that at 250,000, that's where it breaks. Uh, oh, it, it's... And that's where it begins to go down. After 250,000, your increase in salary doesn't increase your... 75K. <laughs> I'm I'm seriously working towards <clears throat> pay me the shit money that I'm getting now, but let me work less so that I can do more homework. Like work at home, work on my music, work on my other shit. Work that, on you? Yes. This year instead of me bargaining for more money yeah, don't per hour, more goddamn money per I bargained hour. for ten extra days off a year. They gave it to me because it comes to less than a dollar an hour. I may try. Go. I may try saying, "Cut me two dollars an hour to get that this year," because, or yeah, I'll, I'll take this position too. Give me, let me work thirty-two hours a week, so that I have that extra eight to, to be me, because this place is not my priority. Right. It's not. It's not who you are as a person. No. It's your job. Yeah. It is absolutely your job. And sometimes, and especially with this generation, it's cognitive dissonance. So you're fighting against who you are as a person yep. to actually go in there. You realize whenever you can't you go wake in, up in the morning. Yeah. You, it, but it is. But on a Saturday when I'm going rock climbing or going to jujitsu, I'm up, boom, right away because it's something I want to do. My brain goes, hey, this shit's good for you. You like it. Get in there. But these jobs, this 40-hour work week, I can't fucking get up. I'll get up 20 minutes till, throw my shit on, and walk in there. You realize who you are as a person, and you have to fight against that in order to go to work. But that's why some of the people who work for themselves, and they make nothing. I mean, they make less than they were. Mm -hmm. Like They're like, oh, I was a banker in uh, Goldman Sachs, and yep. I made 800 bajillion dollars a year, and now I make 42 k and it barely keeps the doors open on this place. But it's like, well, how, how much you did you save up? Oh, I work 60 hours a week, shit and I job. love my life. How much did you, you save know? up working that shit job so you got a buffer? A, a lot of those people, they didn't. <laughs> they just know. quit. And I mean, have you watched any of the stuff that happened since the recession? I've watched quite... I, I watch a ton of, like, motivational videos on YouTube. Like, oh, I quit my job. Da -da 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 -da. But at the same time, you were making... Hundred thirty thousand a year living um, primitively mm. or frugal. So how much did you save up before you quit your job and all of a sudden found yourself with that buffer? Yes. I ain't got no goddamn buffer. I'll have to find it for you. But there's a series of documentaries mm -hmm. where it was people who were making uh, six figures a year 
who were living paycheck to paycheck. And That's ridiculous. Then, then their jobs got eliminated during the recession, and they decided, I I don't have any skills other than these that are no longer in favor. I'm going to start my own business. How can I'm you be paycheck work to paycheck working six, or making six figures? You say that, you but it's that because problem. your cost of living and your expectations go up. That consumer society. It, it's the same way, exactly. It's the yeah. same way that people are upset now that, I make seven twenty five an hour, but it's you make seven twenty five an hour, and that doesn't afford you a house, a car, an iPad, an iPhone, an uh, internet. No, you aren't doing a high end job. You don't get high end support. Frozen. So it's it, oh, we're better maybe. Oh, maybe, but it, it's Still, that same sort of it's that same it's sort of premise and and then oh, like yeah. a brainwash. Oh, absolutely. The consumer mind state is horrible. I I will one hundred percent agree with you on that. But this series, it has people who lost their high-paying jobs, and they decided, you know what, what's the way that I can do this? Oh, you, a lot of properties being foreclosed on. A lot of these businesses are being foreclosed on. I'm going to open up this shop that I'm passionate about, and it's because they cared about it so much that they were willing to invest themselves in it mm-hmm. and care about it and actually you know, pass off information uh, that, they, that they've succeeded. I mean, one of the things that brings that to mind is, uh, a few weeks ago, we went to McPherson, and we went to the the game store that was there. Yeah, and we went to that little restaurant that was there. Yep. I know that restaurant. You were like, ah, I would never wait this long. Once I finally got my food and everything, I was like, I can understand why this is a family, like like, like a little small family business, and they sell the sandwich shop. I, I get that, but the game store was one of the things too. Those guys that run that game store, I don't know if you know this, they all work a nine to five. They're usually open from 5 to 8 during the weekdays. And then on the weekends, they're open from 9 a.m. until 8 p.m., I want to say. But it's because it's their after-hours job. It's their passion that keeps that open. But now that has succeeded their day job. Mm-hmm. It, it's actually taken over. And it was because... They go, they, fuck it, I'll take $600 less a month. Because exactly. I enjoy this more than exactly my bullshit manufacturing job it, it's what their passion was it and wasn't what their family job was it wasn't what anything like that it was what they wanted to do and we're getting to the point now where Charlie, that's actually what's up? a Eric, possibility what's up? uh it, and i've had i know you were in, on this tempted. conversation with this and i don't know that i've had this conversation with you but one of the things that they think is going to happen because of self-driving cars is that places that were parking areas are going to be away with which is like 60% of all property, uh, or, or at least all public property, is, is, is parking space. And so since we're going to have possibly car shares due to self-driving vehicles, they believe that's going to go away. But a lot of the jobs that are dependent on vehicles and transportation and things like that uh, are going to be done away with. And a lot of things that can be automated so... are going to be done away with. And they believe that that property is going to be bought up by people who are providing forms of entertainment, which is what people who are now have money are going to have to buy into. And it's our form of a paradise situation. So either you have the level of knowledge that you're working in a position that constantly stimulates your brain, or you're working in a position of your passion. So and does the does the car drop you off at work and go back home? Or is there still a parking garage that your car sits in? At a lower cost. So it's shared cars, right? Yes, that's exactly it. So instead of it costing you what's believed to be roughly 10 cents per mile on your vehicle after you figure in vehicle cost, it's actually going to be a shared cost. Uh, so you go to work at 8, maybe I go to work at 9, or maybe I go to work at 7.30, and after the car's done dropping me off, it goes and it picks you up. And then uh, it picks me up for lunch at 11.15 because I went in at 7.30, and it picks you up at noon. Okay. And then it drops us both off. But it's constantly running, and it takes nobody to it's make constantly to, saving money. So it's we both share it. Of, of, so it, it's it's absolutely that, and it's it's a direct. It's not a you're, bus. You're it's paying not a, a percentage of the vehicle, yes. rather than having to own one. It's a cost or, share, or almost lease like one. a almost like a vacation home. Wow. So yeah, it it's That's supposed awesome, to but it's supposed to change the dynamics of the way that we actually do a lot of things. So it, it's. It's extremely interesting. We the guy was on campus who talked about a lot mm-hmm. of this, and then I went and I looked up even more of it. I don't know. Like, you oh, were wow. headed that direction. I thought you were headed more of the uh, put your job and uh, your chase your passion. 
I I always want to believe that, but no, you should, you should never you should never do that. Bullshit. Yeah. So I've thought about just going and taking like a job at a climbing gym and making eleven bucks an hour again until you learn how to own your own. Yeah. Until I, I mean, learn how to personally train people and get good enough over four or five years of training myself and just the, the long game instead of the, the shit I don't want to do. So I think that with a restaurant all the time, I'm like, I would love to own a, a, a restaurant that has a bar. I, I would love to do that. I know. But I, the amount of failure rate is so sky high. But if you believe in yourself, the failure rate doesn't fucking matter. It, I know if, if I were to do it and, and cared about it, which I will, I could train people to be badass and make money off of that and say, fuck the 40. I get money just from personal training sessions. But also, do you have like, the area to support it? I mean, there's a lot of metrics. Here, that have fuck to, no. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a lot of metrics that have to go into that, too. No, I'd have to so, be in, in a hub. Yeah. For sure. But that, I mean, I've looked in the bliss bouldering and climbing is hiring in Wichita. Can you read Brad's mm. comment? I can't read that. Brad, how does that work when you want to go out for social events at the same time? Tate, Tate does, does uh, different, physical, different directions. physical directions. It, it wouldn't. So you would participate mm -hmm. in roughly a group. Uh, and this group would own... It. So instead of four people owning four vehicles, eight people would own four vehicles, but they'd be part of multiple different groups. And so you would all roughly have the same shares. Even if it you've never be, hung out before, yes, you still bought into the same... Uh, dealer mm -hmm. or like make company toyota for example so they go hey we've got a camera for this for camry for this rate yep for you eight guys or we've got a corolla for 60 percent of that price right it, it would be very similar to how an or uber is now. yeah gas so, costs you more but you've got a little more room than camry or whatever or or you can go up in the mountains because it's four by four so it costs a little more so I guess the, the best way to express this would be, it would be kind of like insurances now. You are part of a high or low investment and risk group, so your group would share these resources. This so is does business plan based. Yeah. We could, we could... Yeah. So, <laughs> so does your group share these times, and over this average amount of group, uh, what are the traveling times, and how large does the vehicle need to be, <laughs> and how willing are these people to be in going to the same place so maybe you and three people you work with since brad you work at cerner maybe you and three people that you work with are invested in the same group you have the same interest groups and the same time frame groups and you go to the same areas well how how willing are you to be in the same vehicle traveling with somebody else you're very willing because it keeps costs down great you know what we buy an excursion it hauls 11 people there's only ever four of you at the same time in that one vehicle. So it's cheaper. But now, yeah, now this cost of an excursion, instead of it being on one person, it's over five because it's the original owner or plus the four of you who are traveling. Or you want a two-door. Yeah. And it's about the same price. So you, you all share this. And if you have to go to two places at one time, well, instead of it being one person who owns that one vehicle, five of you own two vehicles. Man, it's still such a lower cost. But also in that same time frame, it's not just the five of you who own it. There are five more who also own it, who share it in the off times. So now you've split that cost of what was one in five to one in ten, and you just run it constantly. So it's it's much, much cheaper. So your one in your your thirteen cents a mile becomes one to two cents a mile. And even at two cents a mile, you're now making a profit. It's huge. I mean, it's a it's a very drastic difference, and your car doesn't have to stay stationary at any one given point. And that one given point, you could say you could turn on a what's basically a loitering mode, and for the next two hours, I need you to be an Uber vehicle, and then you come back here at the time that I I request you, or after this point in the next fifteen minutes, you take no additional requests, but you only take requests for that fifteen minutes that have to do, or I'm sorry, within that two hours, that only have to do 15-minute directions. So you you have that time where it's just filling all of that gap. 
So your vehicle is under constant load. It's kind of like a, a CPU. Your CPU is meant to be at a load that's 90%, roughly all the time. If it's above that, then it's running it too hard. If it's below that, then it actually has an idling process that bumps it up to 90%. You want your vehicle to be at the same point. It, the, so you, you do your gas changes, or you, you get your gas, and you get your oil changes, and your, your everything like that. But when you're all investing with your oil change and your maintenance and everything at the same the, mileage, it's so split that you can, you can recycle your vehicle every five years, every 10 years, every whatever it is that breaks apart the, on a group. The manufacturing so much number cheaper. of vehicles required would go down. Absolutely. Fucking like 60%. Absolutely. 70. It would, it would make it so crazily different. And then the, the market for actually selling vehicles would be so different as well. It doesn't then have to be what is the style of your vehicle. It's what's the. I have I have an cost alternative yes. efficiency. Yes, what's so the efficiency? You have a manufacturer of a vehicle that if you want access to that vehicle, mm -hmm. you pay a monthly fee, like Adobe with uh, Creative Cloud. You no longer can buy the program; you buy access for a year. Any of their Adobe uh, or yeah. per month. So instead of buying and owning a car. You, you uh, pay access for a service. Yep. And that yep. service is that you will have a car available at these guaranteed times to make sure you get to these non-negotiable uh, places. So yep. you have to be at work by this time. We're going to make that work. We have thousands of cars in our fleet. One mm -hmm. of them will be available. And all the rest of the time, they're available for everybody else for whatever mi miscellaneous tasks they're going to do. Yep. So instead of owning a vehicle, you pay... $100 a month service fee for to GM or to Ford or to whoever uh, to where at 8 a.m. or 7.50 when you uh, walk out your door every morning, there's a car waiting in your driveway. You hop mm -hmm. in it. It drives you to work. It drops you off. And then it goes and it makes money. Uh, that's a real scenario that I can see playing out in my life. Absolutely. Exactly I mean, instead of having doing. public transportation at this point, now you have no need for government-funded public transportation, and you have private-funded transportation. And you can also get paid on your way to work and from. Yeah. You I can mean, literally work on the way to work. Yeah, because you're, not, you're not driving. Yep. Yeah. That, that, as much as I love that idea, I hate that fucking idea. Can you imagine the necessity? And it would be, because 5G is going to become a thing. So can you imagine having 5G and then... In what would have normally been your two and a half hour commute from, oh man, I got to go to the the Topeka site today. Instead of that being like, oh fuck, at least at least today I only go to work for two hours because I have this orientation. No, you're on call for that two and a half hours while you fuck get there, that, dude. I would love oh. it because in that time fuck that I'm that. wasting driving, because I'm wasting it driving. I don't want to text on my phone, look through my playlist, any of that shit while I'm driving on the highway. To Kansas City for two hours, two and a half hours. When I could knock, what what percentage is that out of a forty hour work week? Times twenty. You mentioned five percent of a work week and a fucking car ride to Kansas City. Five percent on the way back. I can get shit done then, and then that frees more time up for me during the week. You mentioned to playlists. get shit that I want to Maybe do. That's done. what we should make our company based on playlists. <laughs> What kind of music do you listen to? Oh, that's the group that you want to be paired with. Gotcha. Gotcha. There's already <laughs> people doing that. Uh, Spotify playlist people. You done? Yeah. You, you closing it out? I'm, clo Empties? I'm saying Empties? shut the fuck up, you fucks. All All right. Right. I want an enchilada. <laughs> Cheers, you empty bitches. All right. <laughs> Anybody who wants to invest on me with a cost shared car. Send me at jason at bruisebrosbs.com. Or fuck you, Tate, at bruisebrosbs.com. Yeah. Either it's or. Thing. Either, I won't respond to your emails, though. I'll check that one, too. <laughs> I won't check my email. So. <laughs> Brad says, didn't you have that idea uh, based on video games, Jason? Dude, I, Brad, I nobody came, cares. I, one night, I came up with an amazing idea for Sounds a video like a game stoner while I was very, 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 very drunk. Drunk. Okay. And it was awesome. <laughs> I still remember it because I was like, this is so amazing. I'll never forget this. I think it is a very good concept. <laughs> and Once it gets approved, maybe we should immediately start looking into it. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Dude. Especially in a small area like this. Holy shit, can you imagine? Look into it. Look into it.
it's it literally literally put Uber out of business. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, Uber's putting taxis out of business. Tonight was very different without Neff. It was. It was Way a... more political, uh, a little quieter, but I still miss the guy. It was it was calm, but we do the same calm whenever Tate's gone too. So I don't know that it True. has to do with uh, I think it's the, the person. Three man show. Yeah, yeah. It's filling that gap. We'll see. Everyone if I'm ever gone. Yeah. If I'm ever gone, we'll see. No. If you're ever gone, all we're gonna do is play Grow Force. Uh, <laughs> see you guys next week. Jason's gone next uh, week, right? I am gone next week. So it'll be a three man show again, unless we can get an improv. If you want to invite Elder, uh, I would be happy for Elder to take over for me again. <laughs> Second best cast ever. I know he's been going through some shit, but if he's doing it, I'll do it. Peace. Later, Later, fellas. Everybody. Oh no. Oh.